Welcome to a video on financial economics, which also mixes the issue of state ownership versus private ownership of businesses in the UK. Should UK banks be nationalised? These are the biggest banks in the UK in 2022. Banks by net profit, um, HSBC, huge, obviously a global bank in many ways, so too Barclays. Uh, Lloyd's, I think, is one of the biggest banks, essentially UK based in terms of mortgages and so on and so forth. These are making big profits. Lloyd's nearly £14 billion, pounds. Barclays just under £6 billion. Lloyd's not far behind, NatWest and Standard Chartered. In aggregate, the banking sector of the UK is highly profitable and um, this obviously led to huge debates about uh, whether or not the, the industry is too profitable, exploiting its oligopolistic power, its monopoly power. Is it serving the interests of businesses and households in the economy in an efficient and equitable way? So in terms of a bit of background, again, HSBC and Lloyd are the largest banks in the country, uh, but they also rank amongst the top 10 banks in Europe in terms of the value of the stock market value, market capitalisation. Lloyd's in that west, rank as the 10th and 40th, 14th largest in Europe, Barclays and Standard Chartered, as we know. Now, in the wake of the global financial crisis in 2008 onwards, the UK government did, in fact, part nationalise uh, a number of banks, uh, but it's gradually returned them to the private sector. So one thinks, for example, of Royal Bank of Scotland, Northern Rock, and quite a few others. Uh, the UK government's stake in that West is one of the ones that's still there. It's formerly known as the Royal Bank of Scotland. Uh, that stake is now down below 50%. I think the government does have a plan to try to fully return uh, NatWest back to the private sector. But it still has a 41% stake, whereas Lloyds Bank... That was bought, they bought HBOS in a kind of government orchestrated rescue plan uh, at the height of the crisis and the depth of the, of the, of the crisis in financial markets. Uh, that was, uh, Lloyds was given a 20 billion bailout. Uh, they bought back the last of its shares in 2017. So Lloyds Bank is now back in private ownership. So what about this whole issue of nationalising commercial banks? What would proponents of this policy say? Have a moment. This is maybe a moment, uh, perhaps a chance to press the pause button and maybe jot your own thoughts down. I'll give you a couple of arguments. Arguments in favour of state ownership of commercial banks. OK, well, here we go. Uh, proponents basically argue that it would give greater stability to the financial system by essentially allowing the government to have better control, greater control over, for example, bank lending. Um, and hopefully ensuring that banks act in the public interest rather than just purely driven by the profit motive. One of the big criticisms of the banking system in the global financial crisis and subsequently was they lent out too much money in search of profit. They took on too much debt. They were too highly leveraged, to use a technical term. They took on too many risks. And that was a catalyst for the global financial crisis. Now, in theory, state-owned banks would be less susceptible to big economic external shocks because they have access to state funding during times of crisis. So the government essentially could operate as a, as, a, as a funder of the banks, and that would lower the risk of financial instability, which is, as we know, financial instability has hugely damaging effects on the wider economy. There are significant externalities. Second argument really is to do with profitability, the costs of borrowing, and the return to savers. So we know that banks are profitable, so the profits generated by state-owned banks could be used, for example, to fund improved public services and infrastructure because the government would be the main owner. So taxpayers would get the dividend, if you like, from the profits of banks. And in theory, because they're not uh, beholden to the stock market and things, nationalised banks would not have to pay as, as big a, maybe as big a salary or bonus to shareholders and executives. Either way, there could be less pressure uh, to increase costs and in theory, that might allow nationalised banks, state-owned banks, to charge lower interest on loans. They don't have to be charged a profit-maximising interest rate. And hopefully offer a better interest rate on saving. One of the criticisms of commercial banks at the moment, with their monopoly power, is that the interest rates they're charging um, on loans are pretty high, especially personal loans, and corporate loans. And the rate of return on saving that they're offering is minuscule. I mean, it really is tiny, certainly relative to inflation. So cheaper loans, better interest rates on savings in theory would help families on low incomes, or families overall, I suppose, but in, and also maybe smaller businesses needing loan finance. 
and a state-owned banking sector or a state-owned national bank, perhaps just one of them, might be more willing and able through government subsidy to keep branches open, including those in rural areas where people aren't necessarily well served uh, by the banking network. So there we go. I think the general idea is that the idea would be state-owned banks would be more likely to act in the social or the public interest rather than driven purely by the profit motive. Now, what are the counter arguments? What are the, if you're going to evaluate, again, press the pause button if you want to have a go at this. What would you put down as arguments against state ownership, part or whole nationalisation of commercial banks? What do you think? Have a go. So I'm going to take you through two main broad arguments. I think generally speaking, opponents of nationalising banks argue that it's going to lead to a, uh, a cost and a consequence. One of the costs would be the fiscal cost. Presumably the government would have to buy the banks from their shareholders. They'd have to offer money. Uh, that wasn't always the case, by the way. Uh, shareholders in Northern Rock didn't get a penny for their shares. But if the government had to buy the banks from their shareholders, that would presumably cost billions of pounds. And uh, One of the arguments is that because these banks would not be under the day-to-day -day scrutiny of private investors and the rigours of the stock market... Big, bulky state-owned banks might be more vulnerable, for example, to diseconomies of scale, too much hierarchical management. They may be less efficient. And those higher costs for cons uh, running the business might feed through to the interest rates charged on loans, for example. And the other, issue, the other one, of course, is, is efficiency. So banks, uh, nationalising the banks is arguable could lead to a lack of competition, less innovation... State-owned banks might be less likely, and that just means the word might there, might be less likely to take risks and develop new financial products and, and services, although financial innovation has caused problems in the past. A lot depends on the extent to which commercial banks remain, uh, banking overall remains a contestable industry. Are you fully nationalising the industry, the sector, or are you, are you just creating maybe one state-owned bank in competition with others? The other argument against state ownership is that arbitrary state ownership, taking a bank into state ownership without any significant reason other than politics, might make the UK financial services industry, which employs nearly 3 million people, a big percentage of GDP, might make it less attractive to foreign direct investment. And FDR is significant, particularly obviously in London, but also in major, major regional cities. And others, others argue that nationalising the banks, taking them into state ownership, could result in politicisation of lending decisions, which could then lead to inefficient allocation of capital, inefficient allocation of credit. In other words, if you're against this, you believe that state ownership would lead to government failure. Well, uh, certainly nationalisation would be a switch from a shareholder to a stakeholder approach. Instead of pure focus on profit, you'd be bringing wider shareholders, including things like unions, including employees, businesses, and so on. State ownership of banks does happen it happens in the European Union, for example, the KFW, the Government Owned Development Bank, which is actually funding a lot of the sort of green investment at the moment. The state-owned Landers Bank at regional level, responsible for industrial strategy. So there is some support for public ownership if we look across to Germany. Uh, we know that bailouts and nationalisation can be expensive. The total spend in and around a financial crisis on those bailouts we mentioned, is over £130 billion. The net spend, when you've sold the businesses back to the private sector, is probably around 23 to £25 billion. So bailing out banks and nationalisation can be quite costly. In fact, some countries are now trying bail-ins <laughs> instead of bailouts. So a commercial bank, which is in trouble, would issue bonds, which are converted into equity if a bank's losses wipe out their capital reserves. So in other words, if a bank uh, goes into trouble, automatically um, those bonds are converted to equity and uh, shareholders therefore take the hit from the bank's losses. Warren Buffett just the other day was arguing that he thought that bank executives, CEOs, managers should pay the penalty for bank mismanagement. Silicon Valley Bank, First Republic and Credit Suisse and others. And the argument, and one of the arguments there might well be that uh, in the banking sector, Ultimately, it should be shareholders as well as managers who take the rap if banks fail. My final point is that the quality of regulation is important. And that, and that doesn't really matter whether you have state or private banks. The quality of banking regulation is so important. Creating those conditions where 
banking failures are less likely. You can make a, a case for saying that import regulation is more significant per se than is ownership. Now, there aren't many political parties arguing for the nationalisation of banks, but you never know, this could be an exam question. And if you found the video useful, I'd love it if you just give it a quick like, that'd be fantastic. Please think about uh, subscribing to the channel and pressing the notification bell for future videos. Huge thanks for joining it. As always, we never take it for granted. Stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, stay curious, and see you sometime soon.